We started this semester with handwritten manuscripts on papyrus scrolls, and we have finally made it to Farmville. We'll start with the early history of digital gaming, including its roots in penny arcades, and trace the evolution of digital gaming from arcades and bars to living rooms and mobile devices. When the Industrial Revolution swept Western civilization two centuries ago, the technological advances involved weren't simply about mass production. They also promoted mass consumption and the emergence of leisure time, both of which created money-making opportunities for media makers. In the 1880s, the seeds of the modern entertainment industry were planted via a series of coin-operated contraptions devoted to cashing in on idleness, first appearing in train depots, hotel lobbies, bars, and restaurants. These leisure machines, also called counter machines, would find a permanent home in the first thoroughly modern indoor playground, the Penny Arcade. In some ways, the Penny Arcade was a proving ground for new technology. Automated phonographs used in arcade machines evolved into the jukebox, while the kinetoscope set the stage for modern movie exhibition. Early games included strength tests, where users could show off their muscles by punching a boxing bag or arm wrestling a robot like Uncle Sam. Others required more refined skills and sustained play, such as those that simulated bowling, horse racing, or football. The most prominent mechanical game was the pinball machine, in which players score points by manipulating the path of a metal ball on a play field enclosed in a glass case. In the 1930s and 1940s, players could only control the launch of the ball. Pinball was considered a sinister game of chance, like the slot machine, and banned in major U.S. cities like New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Pinball gained mainstream acceptance after World War II with the addition of the flipper bumper, which enables a player to save the ball from certain doom by flipping it back up the play table. This innovation transformed pinball into a challenging game of skill, touch, and timing, all of which would become vital abilities for video game players years later. The post-war popularity of pinball set the stage for the emergence of video games. The first video game patent was issued in 1948 to Thomas T. Goldsmith and Estelle Ray Mann for their cathode ray tube amusement device. The invention was never marketed or sold, but featured the co key component of the first video games, the cathode ray tube. CRT type screens provided the images for analog television and for early computer displays, on which the first video games would appear a few years later. Computer scientists developed these games as novelties in the 1950s and 1960s, but because computers consisted of massive mainframes at the time, the games were not readily available to the general public. As more people began to own televisions, that provided a different platform for video games. German immigrant and television engineer Ralph H. Baer developed the first home TV gaming console. Released by Magnavox in 1972, Odyssey used player controllers that moved dots of light around the screen and a 12-game inventory of simple aiming and sports games. At the same time, a young American computer engineer named Nolan Bushnell and his electrical engineer friend Ted Dabney founded the video game development company Atari. The company designed a two-dimensional electronic ping pong game based on one of the games included in the Magnavox Odyssey. But unlike the original version, Atari's Pong made blip noises when the ball hit the paddles or bounced off the sides of the court. Pong quickly became the first video game to hit it big in arcades. Oh, and yeah, Magnavox totally sued. The two companies settled out of court, but it's Pong, not the Odyssey game, whose cultural impact made it part of the permanent collection of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. In 1975, Atari began successfully marketing a home version of Pong through an exclusive deal with Sears, firmly establishing the home video game market. And in case you've never seen Pong in all its glory, here it is. 
the two paddles return the ball back and forth with the score noted by the numbers at the top of the screen. First one to 11 wins with points earned when one player fails to return the ball to the other. That's it, other than the blip noises. Digital games have evolved over time from their simplest arcade forms into four major formats, television, handheld devices, computers, and finally the internet. As the form evolved and graphics advanced, distinctive types of games emerged and became popular. Together, these varied forms constitute an industry that now generates $135 billion in annual revenues worldwide, and that has become a socially driven mass medium. By the late 1970s and early 1980s, games like Pac-Man, Asteroids, and Donkey Kong filled arcades and bars, competing with traditional pinball machines. To play the classic arcade games, as well as many of today's popular ga console games, players use controllers like joysticks and buttons to interact with graphical elements on a video screen. With a few notable exceptions, these types of video games require users to identify with the position on the screen, something like the electronic paddle in Pong. After the 1980 release of Pac-Man, the Avatar, a graphic interactive character within the game, became the most common figure of player control and position identification. Ms. Pac-Man was created two years later in response to the original game's popularity among female players. Home gaming consoles have become increasingly more powerful than the early Atari consoles of the 1970s. One way to track their evolution is by the number of binary digits, or bits, they can process at one time. The Atari 2600, released in 1977 and my first experience with digital video games, used an 8-bit processor, as did the Nintendo Entertainment System, released in 1983. Sega Genesis, the first 16-bit console, appeared in 1989. 32-bit computers arrived on the market in 1992, followed by 64 bits the following year. The 128-bit era was ushered in with the 1999 Sega Dreamcast. The current generation of consoles has 256-bit processors to make games look more like movies. But more detailed graphics and complex storylines have not replaced simpler games. 1985's Super Mario Brothers for the 8-bit Nintendo NES was the best-selling video game until as recently as 2009. Graphical elements from the game are instantly recognizable to gamers of all ages. Three major home console makers dominate the industry, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. Nintendo has been around since the 1980s with its classic NES console. Its 16-bit Super Nintendo was released to North American markets in 1991. Sony introduced its PlayStation series in 1994 with its PS5 released in November 2020. According to Statista, the PlayStation Network had 114 million monthly active users in December 2020. An estimated 36.3 million users paid for the subscription service PlayStation Plus at the end of 2018, which allows subscribers to gain access to exclusive content and early releases. You'll notice the graphics on Infamous, one of my favorite PlayStation games, are a bit more complex than Super Mario Brothers on the last slide. Microsoft released the Xbox in 2001 linking it to the Xbox Live online service in 2002. Xbox Live had nearly 90 million subscribers as of April 2020, allowing them to play online and enabling users to download new content directly to their console. Nintendo got back in the game in 2006 with their release of the Wii, which featured a unique wireless motion sensing controller and games like Wii Sports and Wii Fit. In 2017, Nintendo started selling the Switch, a hybrid of a television console, traditional game controllers, and a tablet. All three major game consoles develop games for their own proprietary systems, although some game content is released on all three platforms. 
game offering became a major selling point for a particular system. Once used exclusively for gaming, video game consoles have become powerful entertainment centers. Xbox One and newer PlayStations offer access to Twitter, Facebook, blogs, and video chat, while functioning as DVD and Blu-ray players and digital video recorders. My PS3 was my first Blu-ray player. Along with Wii, Xbox and PlayStation also offer connections to streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. Portable gaming consoles are also popular, starting with Nintendo's Game Boy in 1989. The early handhelds gave way to later generations of devices, offering increasingly converged portable gaming experiences. The Nintendo DS and PlayStation Portable, for example, allowed users to connect with other players online via the device's built-in Wi-Fi. And we've already mentioned the Nintendo Switch, which features a hybrid console that incorporates a touchscreen tablet. Early home computer games, like the early console games, often mimicked, and sometimes ripped off, popular arcade games like Frogger, Pac-Man, and Space Invaders. But for a time in the late 1980s and much of the 1990s, personal computers held some clear advantages over console gaming. The versatility of keyboards, compared with relatively simple early console controllers, allowed for ambitious, puzzle-solving games. I personally enjoyed 1984's Donald Duck's Playground, in which your favorite cartoon duck undertakes a series of odd jobs, such as sorting cargo at the airport, to earn money for playground toys for his nephews. Post Donald Duck, faster processing speeds gave some computer games richer, more detailed 3D graphics. Many of the most popular early first-person shooter games like Doom and Quake were developed for home computers rather than consoles. As consoles caught up with greater processing speeds and disc-based games in the late 1990s, elaborate computer games attracted less attention. But due to the advent of internet-based free-to-play games, subscription games, social media games, and the Steam PC game platform, PC gaming has experienced a resurgence. With powerful processors for handling rich graphics and more stable internet connectivity for downloading and playing games, personal computers can adeptly handle a wide range of activities. The internet has opened the door to social gaming and enabled the spread of video games to converge devices, such as tablets and mobile phones, making games more portable and creating whole new segments in the gaming industry. This connectivity has also opened the door to virtual worlds massively multiplayer online games, and multiplayer online battle arenas. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games, or MMORPGs, are set in virtual worlds where users play with an avatar of their own design. They're testament to the popularity of digital games, originally designed for solo or small group play, and now reaching large groups like traditional mass media do. Two of the most popular MMORPGs are World of Warcraft, which peaked at 12 million subscribers in 2010, and Overwatch, which had more than 40 million players as of 2018. A variation on the MMORPG theme is the Multiplayer Online Battle Arena, or MOBAs. Rather than open-ended quests and storylines, these feature short, discrete matches between individuals or teams matched up with as many as a hundred different opponents, all being controlled by human players. The goal is typically to be the last player or team left in the game. Popular MOBAs include League of Legends and Fortnite. Online fantasy sports games also reach a mass audience with a major social component. Players assemble teams using actual sports results to determine scores in their online games. Unlike playing a sports video game, fantasy players participate taking a managerial role invested in the individual performance of players in teams across the league. In the process, players become statistically savvy aficionados of the game overall, rather than rabid fans of a particular team. In 2017, more than 59.3 million people played fantasy sports in the U.S. and Canada, 
And it isn't just football, basketball, baseball, and hockey that attract fantasy players. There's also fantasy soccer, golf, auto racing, and professional wrestling, among others. The increasingly social nature of video games makes them a natural fit for social networking sites, still attracting millions of players every day. According to the New York Times, at its peak, the Facebook game Farmville had 32 million daily active users and nearly 85 million players overall. The game, and others like it, encouraged daily playing and helped turn Facebook from a place you went to check updates to a time-spending destination itself. You could also leverage your Facebook friends for bonus items and extra lives. The idea behind Farmville was to appeal to a broad audience, especially adults and women who have never spent hundreds of dollars on a gaming console. It previewed the soon to explode market for mobile games with casual gamers shifting away from desktops as smartphones became more prevalent.